Welcome once again to our Titus Two Women Show, and today I have once more I have my pastor and friend Joy McGinnis. Joy is a pastor on her own and the wife of our senior pastor at Fisherman's Net Revival Center. I asked you a qu question the other day that mm -hmm. actually I was kind of surprised at her answer. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I said all. I, I, how did you get prepared mm -hmm. to enter the ministry mm -hmm. and with Jim? And you said, oh, all of my life has been in preparation for these ministries. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Yes, I believe that, you know, we're being prepared. Every part of our life is being mm -hmm. pre uh, in preparation for what the Lord has called us to do and to be. No, uh, I knew that all, my heart has always been to, to serve mm -hmm. the Lord, you know. Even as a child, I've always loved the Lord, and I've always been wants to involve with different um, ways to serve Him. And, uh, and I also knew that even w when I was practicing as a dentist, I was pursuing a career in the acad academia, that it will all still be for, n for nothing if it's not going to be used for the glory of the Lord. So even when I was a dentist, my practice was designed to bless Christians and pastors and missionaries and all kinds of people that the Lord will bring through my door Whether they're able to pay or not to pay is not a problem, you know It's always been a ministry and then so I use it for mission works and all that and then so uh, All of that and 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 you know in my old church in the Philippines um, I was a cell leader I was a in cell a cell leader. I was Explain in charge cell Well a today. cell leader is like a small group uh, where you are like uh, a mini pastor, where you cater to the spiritual needs of the people, even the practical needs, you know, if they're going through some hard times, how you uh, find ways to, you know, if they need money, how you pray in the money, or maybe do some practical ways to uh, raise the money. So I was a cell group leader of several cells, and then, um, and so in a way it's like a, a sm small church. You're like, you're like a pastor of a small church, you know, uh, that's the concept. You're like a shepherd. Uh, you take care of the people. So I've been involved with that for, for several years. And so when I answered you that all of my life has been a preparation to where I am now, that is so true. Mm -hmm. Because every part, you know, even uh, the, mission, the, the mission trips that we've yes. been where, where uh, you, you, you do what you need to do, you, you get involved with, you don't, uh, you don't, you're not afraid to dirty your hand to do the work, and you don't count the hours of how much time you put into for that day, it doesn't matter. It's all part of what I'm doing now because when we started the church, if there was no preacher, you preach. If there's no, nobody to clean the bathroom, you clean the bathroom. If nobody takes care of the kids, you take care of the kids. If nobody this, do this and that, you do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're ready to do anything <clears throat> that is set before you. Oh, and I've seen you do many things with many hats, so mm -hmm. I can understand mm -hmm. that. One comment <clears throat> that you might talk about uh -huh. is you had quite a few cross-cultural missions yes and your husband had lots of cross-cultural mission mm -hmm. type work okay did that help you yes it did you know when uh, I started going out on medical trips first locally and then the Lord opened for me to go on medical missions on uh, different countries in Asia and the team would be comprised of different nationalities, some from Australia, New Zealand, America, Germany, Filipino. So in a way that was also preparation because then you get to see each other, uh, different cultures and you, you, uh, you learn to respect and adapt and adjust to these different cultures. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, part of the preparation. Yes, yeah. because you married an American. Because I married an American. <laughs> but I then, I knew that I'm, I'm going to marry somebody from a faraway land and not a Filipino. Because the Lord gave me a strong word that he's going to send somebody from a faraway land. And for me to get ready and to leave my father's household. That's a strong word. Very strong <laughs> word. That's and it took 10 years for it to be fulfilled. Oh, my ten goodness. 10 years. I waited 10 years, prayed this man in, waited. Oh, I can't imagine <laughs> waiting 10 years for a husband. 
I might be like uh, Abraham and try to help the situation out. <laughs> I, I was tempted to do that, but then uh, I, dis I decided <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> so your ability to uh, cross-culture uh -huh. and adapt really blends with Jim because he spent decades in Northern Europe. Correct. Yes. And, and even though you were worlds apart in your uh, even in your cross-cultural experiences, yes. I just, it just occurred to me, when you blend those two uh -huh. uh, backgrounds, you guys can go anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, That's right. And, and hook up pretty easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the national traits, I would say, of a Filipino is that they, uh, they adapt easily with any culture. Anywhere you go in the world, you will see Filipinos working, studying, or just um, you know in different nations mm -hmm. and you see them uh, and most of them have easy adjustments I think that's just I, that's just a, a national trait that's a blessing for us it sure works for yeah. you and yeah. works well in, mm -hmm. in ministry type work correct now I know that both of you have and I want to tell the world out there both Joy and her husband Jim have a servant heart and that means They'll do anything the Lord tells them to do, and lots more uh, to help people. And you know, that's the, the, I don't see any power building or uh, overexertion of authority mm -hmm. uh, upon our congregation. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's that servant heart's kind, not only a key to serving the people, mm -hmm. but it's a key to serving each other. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now. In my opinion, that's a great foundation to build a marriage, mm -hmm. and it's working. Praise <laughs> God. Now, talking about your marriage, how did you get, uh, and when you married Jim, um, you're leaving your ministerial world in mm -hmm. the, we the West <laughs> and coming yes. to his. Uh, actually, the both of you two met. He's from, uh, he was moving his ministry from Europe to the States, and Correct. you moved yours to the States. So that meant... Um, a new environment and mm -hmm. a new ministry, and how did you two get kind of broken into that? Well, when we uh, when we first married, Jim was in transition. He just came back from Sweden, maybe two years back, and trying to to get his life in order again, in you know, get started here in the states. And I and then we met, and then the Lord uh, hooked him up with uh, Dr. Gerald J Durstein, who founded Gospel Crusade International, and actually Jim started his ministry with. Dr. Durstein, when he was like 18 or 19 years old, and he was, I, I believe, still the youngest minister Gerald has ever orda ordained. Really? Yes, when he was only like 18 or 19. So anyway, we got hooked up before we got married with, Ger with Gerald. And so when we got married, Gerald invited us to join him and work in Strawberry Lake in Minnesota as camp pastors. And we did that for two years, you know? Now, Strawberry Lake Strawberry is Lake. Um, Christian Retreat is a is in Minnesota. It's in the middle of an Indian reservation. It's a uh, it's a place where uh, open for the summer from May to September, I would say. And every week we would have different speakers from all over the world would come and minister wow. to the campers, to the guests in the camp. And Jim mm -hmm. and I were privileged to work as camp pastors for two summers. So we were there from April to until we closed the camp, maybe end of September. And I remember, you know, I grew up in the Philippines, and uh, uh, in the Philippines, even if you're a middle-class family, uh, you would have an opportunity to be able to hire household helpers because they're not really expensive. Mm -hmm. So all my life, I grew up with household helpers. You know, we would have two or three. Depends, um, depends on how many, you know, my, my parents can afford at the time. So I would always have, we, I grew up in this environment, and so I would always have uh, the leisure of saying, hey, I want, can you make me coffee, or can you do this, can you iron this for me, can you wash this for me, can you clean this for me, or something like that, you know. So when I came here, <laughs> no one to call on to do this and that. Yeah. So I have to learn how to do it myself, you know, every single th thing. So when we were in the camp, mm -hmm. I saw this messy storage room and I said oh why don't I fix this fix this up and I put everything in order and of course Dr. Durstein was impressed he said "Ooh, this girl can work so he said okay Joy you did a good job this is like 
just a few weeks in camp, you know, not even a month. And Gerald said, I'll make you head of housekeeping. Oh. And I <laughs> panic. I had no idea how to do housekeeping in the States. And I've seen people, you know, because in the camp they have hotels yeah. and hotel rooms and you have, you, and housekeeping takes care of this. Yes. You know how to uh, change the beds and all that. And I had no clue how to do that. You so never change the bed. And you know how you do it like layers and yeah. then fold the sides and what, and all these things. And I had no idea. So people in the camp helped me. <laughs> people in the camp helped me. And so, the, so I was able to do my housekeeping duties uh, successfully. Oh, goodness. So those are the things that I need to, to learn, you know. And then, uh, w <laughs> you know, clean the bathrooms and all that. Every week, transition, different <laughs> guests. And I have to clean the bathroom, wash the sheets and all that. To the point that I've overdone it, that when INS, the immigration, called me to do fingerprinting, uh -huh. They said, what happened to your fingers? There are no prints. We cannot find any prints. Oh. Because of the um, chemicals? Yes. In cleaning the stuff, you know? But then, you know, I said, okay, let's, let's reschedule you and then apply this lotion and then until they finally got some prints. You and I identified who I am. You had to grow <laughs> some skin. <laughs> grow some skin. <laughs> That's right. That's quite a shock. That's quite a shock, yeah. Yeah, really? Yep. And, uh, to be honest, sometimes I like, I want to, I was like having a pity party myself while cleaning the bathroom. I said, oh, in my house, you know, I have helpers to do this. <laughs> but then the Lord said, just serve me. Just be happy and serve me with all your heart, you know, and I know your heart. I know your yes. struggles. And I just keep plodding, keep plodding one day yeah. at a time. Yes, yes. I have to insert my own story about that. God, Father uh, does uh, bring us to a humble position mm -hmm. and then raises us, us up. Uh, there was a church that my husband and I attended and we walked in and sat in dusty pews with <laughs> dust balls and cobwebs in it uh, and when the good Lord let me know that I was supposed to return to that church and become a member of that church the first thing we did was clean the church. Clean up. <laughs> They probably needed help. That's why you were there. Yes. It was so dirty. It took, um, and it was a small church. Mm -hmm. It only mm -hmm. held about 50 people. It took six hours just to dust and oh vacuum my. and clean the bathrooms. Oh, my. Six hours. Mm. Yes. And from that was our start. That's, it's a good place to start. It's a good place to you start. Know? Yes. That's right. So, see? Um, th from there, uh, I went on up the ladder for, for more responsibility, mm -hmm. but yes. uh, uh, you're right. Yes. We must humble ourselves and serve the Lord Correct. any time, any place, any way, especially mm -hmm. a pastor and his wife mm -hmm. and yes. her, her husband. <laughs> yeah, it's a ministry to serve, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so you got kind of broken in uh, at, uh, with the ministry concept. Um, you, I think you mentioned at some point that you did a lot of administration. Mm -hmm. That was another one of your gifts. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you know, when we were working with Dr. Durstein, so we helped a lot with uh, some administrative work for him. And now in the church, I'm doing a lot of administrative work for the church. And, uh, and uh, that's one of my side of the gifting in the ministry, which mm -hmm. complements Pastor Jim's gifting also. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you have to take care of practical stuff. You have to make sure everything is in order, the books are in order, everything is in order, you know, to make the, the, the ministry run smoothly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a blending of giftings when God brings two people together so to serve Him. You know, a w the wife whether you're a uh, co-pastor with your wife or you're not, your gifting is important to complement your husband's gifting. Yes. I think that is very important. Do you think God had a perfect plan for the two of you? I think he, he, he I did. Think he yeah, did I think he did. I think he did. <laughs> the more we talk, the more I see puzzle pieces mm -hmm. interlocking, interacting, interlocking. That's know. right. Yeah. Yes. From all sorts of perspectives. Praise God. Yeah. The cultures, the uh, yes, the giftings, mm -hmm. and the administrative work. Um, so, matter of fact, Jim really relies on you about that. I, I know if if I should ask him about something, uh, 
requiring uh -huh. an administrative decision, he says, uh, go ask Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, or Joy handles my schedule. Yes. Or, you know, so it, that's neat. That's yes, me. yeah, because as as uh, as his partner, I recognize his calling, you know, to 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 preach the word, to study the word, to be in the word, and so for me on my part, my desire is to free him up from all this mm -hmm. pressures and situations that would pull him away from the word of God, you know, because his ministry is okay, Lord, what do you want me to share to your people? To, that will bless them and that will nourish their spiritual needs, you know, mm -hmm. and it will trickle down to all the um, the practical avenues of their life too, mm -hmm. you know. I believe when the spiritual needs of the people are met, then that can be applied to their professional needs, to their personal lives, and to their other aspects of their lives. So you really seek to free your husband up to spend more time in the world, correct? Uh, in order to more powerfully and completely project mm -hmm. whatever the Holy Spirit wants him to mm -hmm. preach and teach on. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. That's good teamwork, Joy. That's good teamwork. It is. Yes. Something else that you said, oh, you said, oh, okay. You told me that on the onset, at, at the onset of your marriage, mm -hmm. that you two were going to focus on working hard together. And having fun and together. Having fun together. Mm -hmm. So right now we're still on the working hard business. Yes. Um, and while we were talking about that, you mentioned something that, um, I don't know, I hadn't thought about before. Uh, and it has to do with the aspect of a husband-wife team, mm -hmm. co-pastoring. You said that it brings security to the congregation to see the couple working together. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that really clanged in my head because so many times the pastor's wife is struggling so hard to, you know, keep a house and children and be uh, a pastor's wife. Many congregations expect much of the pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. And and this can sometimes just tear couples apart. I mean, it can really get tense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you yourself haven't had children, but no. you tell me that you have three sisters that are married I, yeah. and in the ministry mm -hmm. and they have those problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the key Well, in on to keeping it going, keeping it together? Well, I think it's really organized, being organized and being prior uh, prioritizing things, you know. Okay. Um, on my part, um, um, what probably made it more workable or easier is because between Jim and I, we don't have uh, children, mm -hmm. you know, and I just I salute the wives and the the, the the wives that have that that is able to to raise the kids, you know, raise the family, raise help the church, and and do the ministry together. I mean, it's that's a lot more pressure and stress, mm -hmm. and and so. Uh, but uh, I believe is really uh, just keeping in focus the foremost things, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, of course. Uh, uh, it's not good and it's not healthy also that you set aside family demands and needs just because of the ministry, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise you won't, it won't create a very good testimony to those that are watching, you know, that you take care of the church and that your kids are all just is not being taken care of and, and the house is in or disarray and everything is in chaos. So it's just a matter of putting things in order and that takes a lifetime to do, you know, and learn. And so it's, it's on a case-to-case -case basis, okay. yeah. I, I want to take a moment to speak to the women of the congregation uh -huh. uh, and encourage them to not uh, demand too much of the pastor's wife, uh, not to uh, expect her to be at every occasion mm -hmm. and to um, perform in their, quote, uh, proper way because if the pastor and his wife, also a pastor, are praying together mm -hmm. about their priorities, mm -hmm. then God's in control. That's and right. I'm trying to loosen up people's opinion on God being in control of this pastor and the pastor's wife, especially when they're co-pastoring and have family. Mm -hmm. It's only God that can get you through it. That's true. So keep That's praying. True. And, so, and, and I would solicit prayer partners and intercessors mm -hmm. for these ladies. Correct. 
Yes. Correct. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm going to, um, oh, I'm going to quit saying gonna because gonna is a bad word. Gonna. <laughs> I am going to um, talk a little bit about one aspect of your marriage that may not be true for all, but uh, it's very important and it's an example mm -hmm. of a difficulty to overcome. Now, Jim has a problem with his heart mm -hmm. and he needs rest, extra rest. Now, tell us how that affects you and your ministries together. Okay, um, in 2002, Jim, Pastor Jim was diagnosed with a um, heart condition. It's called cardiomyopathy, where the, the heart muscle is not as strong as it should be. But he's being strengthened and being healed by that, by that now by the Lord. And he's, getting, he's going to be healed completely from that. But anyway, there are times in a day, or sometimes it would be days, that where he would feel extremely more tired than usual, and he would need to rest and just, just rest, take time to rest. And it frustrates him because he wants to do more. You know, the demands of the ministry are always there, like I said earlier, but then it's wisdom for him to just step back and say, okay, I need to take a nap or I need to rest. And I always encourage him to do that when those uh, times of fatigue would come, that I, I would say, just, just, stay, just, just rest, honey, and don't feel bad about resting, taking extra time to rest. And then, and those times, sometimes I need to, uh, I would um, cover or what needs to be done, I would compensate, and he feels bad for me to do that but mm -hmm. those are not those are only for certain periods of time and I would so the wife when when your husband is in this place you need to reassure your husband that you know that you're 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 doing it gladly you know you do it gladly you know and you reassure him that you know this is beneficial for him and for the both of us if he gets his rest and that's why I encourage Pastor Jim that if those times of fatigue would come he needs to rest mm -hmm. and then and then and then uh, I, I just need if I need to do a little bit extra that's fine it doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. because we're doing it together he's praying for me and I'm praying for him and 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 when he gets back on his feet again the following day then he do do more it sounds like you're being a bit protective too that is true. That is yeah. true. Yeah, it's wisdom, you know, because you don't want him to push himself and then suffer the consequence later. That's right. He needs to pace himself. That's where wisdom, and that's why sometimes the word, like Joyce Meyer said, the word no is anointed, too. Oh. Like some people would demand this, this, this from you, and sometimes you just have to say no. I cannot do that right now. This is not the best time to do it right now, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. But now... This is kind of special because uh -huh. you are a pastor in your, your own right. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how that plays into uh, your, your lives together and in these ministries. Well, the Word and of God, you know, you be ready in season and out of season. And so I remember one time, it was, is, we're getting ready towards the Easter, the, yes. is this the Easter week, they say yes. it? Weekend yes. or something? Holy Week. Holy Week. And pastor... Friday, he was so tired, and he said, I don't think I can preach this Sunday, honey. S but let me, let me see how I feel tomorrow, Saturday. Saturday came, he was still tired and exhausted. Mm. So he said, I don't think I can preach tomorrow. I said, okay, then let me preach. <laughs> so I did, you know, with not much time to prepare, I preached that Sunday, and by the grace of God, you know, we made it. You we did. made it. You did. So there are times like that, you know, where, yeah. where, where you're called to do certain things mm -hmm. in a moment. And you just need to really trust the Lord and rely on Him fully. That was the, the key phrase. Trust the Lord That's and right. rely on Him fully. Amen. Yes. That's right. That's well, right. I know that some people wanted to have you back on the pulpit after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally you occasionally, do. Occasionally, yes. Occasionally, yes. yes. But that's not your primary focus here and. Mm -hmm. in your joint ministry. Mm -hmm. You have a few other things to do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like leading the worship and uh, other things. <laughs> now, I don't want to, this time to end without touching mm -hmm. upon the personal life. Mm -hmm. now, this is a struggle between uh, a, a, a pastor and another, especially another pastor, mm -hmm. but pastors and wives, um, to, to build 
a, a personal life and at times just cling to it mm -hmm. because the pressures are so uh, intense to pull you apart mm -hmm. and into different worlds. So I want you to please, um, I th you mentioned some things to me that you and Jim really, really mm -hmm. try to do. Like yes. take your meals together. Yes. You know, it's, it's so important not to uh, forget to build up uh, personal time together. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and Jim and I, and it's, it's, it's uh, every couple would be able to work out a special ways to do it between themselves. Like Jim and I, before we go to bed, you know, uh, we, we usually watch a 20-minute show, and we would have fun having a jello and some cream on it together. It's like <laughs> one of the highlights of the day. Okay, do we have jello for tonight, you know? And then we will have, we'll watch something nice and funny, and then we'll have this jello. Or sometimes we take time to go out, you know, and, 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 and just walk mm -hmm. around, you know. Always, whatever it may be, you, all, you take time to do things together. You know, it might not be a whole day together, you know, but at least some segment of time where you, 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 you indulge on one another and do have fun times together. Like we went to um, Epcot Center recently and just enjoyed, you know, enjoyed things like that, you know. Little joys in life that strengthens the relationship. Now, for those that aren't familiar with the words Epcot Center, it's a giant, giant theme park uh, built by... Um, Disney World. Disney World, yeah. Yes. Yeah, for little kids and big kids too. That's right. Yes, and I know. Like Melinda, our camera person. Yes, and Jim, the biggest kid I think I've known in a long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so that that's just to me that's that's so important, mm -hmm. and it's a great word mm -hmm. of, of advice. Do you? I would like for you to take a minute, mm -hmm. the, or less than a minute, <laughs> to give encouragement to the pastor wives out there. Okay. Well, uh, first is that um, recognize that the Lord put you together. Whether you like it or not, in the beginning, God put you together, and He can use that. And also take time not only to support your husband's ministry and giftings and calling, but also to nurture your own, because each person is uniquely gifted. And so I want you should also take time to discover what is your own strength and gifting that you could contribute to the body or to the work of the ministry and develop it and nurture it mm -hmm. because you have something that's different from your husband. And then also just be yourself. Have fun while you do the ministry together. It's not a struggle. It's not all that struggle. It's fun working for the Lord. And there's more I can say, but we have, we're running out of time. Yes. So God has blessed you and your spouse in the ministry, and we hope and pray that uh, you will take some of these words and bless as a blessing to your life too. I'm going to have to end with just a super, super quick prayer. Lord, thank you for all that has been done in this show and use it for your honor and glory to serve the, mm. the Lord and his people here on earth. Amen. Amen. Sing of his glory.